grand jury is getting set to hear testimony today from Michael Cohen's former legal advisor, Robert Costello. It comes one day before the former president says he expects to be arrested. Brooke Singman has the very latest. Brooke. Hey, good morning. Robert Costello, who once served as a legal advisor to President Trump's former attorney, is expected to attack Michael Cohen's credibility during his testimony today. Now, Trump calls Costello, quote, the most important witness in the case, saying the information he will present will supposedly be conclusive and irrefutable. The testimony will focus on Trump's alleged role in a hush money payment made to adult film star Stormy Daniels ahead of the 2016 presidential election. Trump over the weekend, citing reports based on what he called illegal leaks, said he expects to be arrested on Tuesday in connection with the case. Costello reportedly has information that could exonerate the former president and counters previous statements Cohen has made. Now, supporters of the former president gathering outside Trump Tower in Midtown Manhattan over the weekend. The NYPD is bracing for unrest in the city if Trump is indicted. New York is preparing to mobilize 700 riot officers. Meanwhile, House Speaker Kevin McCarthy is calling for peace. Listen. I don't think people should protest this, no. And I, I, I think President Trump, if you talk to him, he doesn't believe that either. Nobody should harm one another in this. Let me be very clear. No matter what transpires, and this doesn't mean this is going to happen, but if was this to happen, we want calmness. This comes as President Trump's lawyer speaks out against New York District Attorney Alvin Bragg, saying the DA is weaponizing his office. If anyone else were in that situation with, with these set of facts, would they be prosecuted? The answer, Mark, by all accounts is 100 percent no. This is a, a politically motivated prosecution. This is the thing that's happening in this country now where we're using the justice system as a weapon. It's weaponization of a prosecutor's office to get a political opponent. Federal and state authorities in New York will be on high alert this week after Trump told supporters to, quote, take our nation back on Truth Social over the weekend. We want your hands high in the air where we can see them. He got something in his hands. Looks like knives. Drop your weapon! I repeat, drop your weapon! Drop your weapon! Drop him! Those aren't weapons! Those are his hands! Please, we know him. All right, cuff him. Today is Tuesday, March 21st, 2023. Key witness in Donald Trump case turns on convicted perjurer Michael Cohen. Trump gets support from some unlikely allies. And Biden crime family may have committed over two dozen felonies. The White House reporter who triggers Corrine Jean-Pierre every single briefing joins us today, Simon Atiba. My name is Benny Johnson, and this is The Benny Show. Oh boy, there is so much news happening so quickly and we will synthesize all of it for you. Would it be possible if we did not have reliable cell phone coverage? And more importantly, what if we were giving our hard earned cash to companies that hate us? Ladies and gentlemen, I have certainly had it with woke companies. They are losing everywhere, whether it be the box office or whether it be Disney World losing, woke companies lose. They are collapsing. ESPN is going to be laying off thousands. Facebook laying off thousands, Amazon laying off thousands. It's terrible for the woke out there. Don't feed the beast. When you're using your cell phone, use a company that loves America. That is why I use Patriot Mobile. Patriot Mobile is building a whole new economy, one that is, embraces the values of America, the greatest country on earth. Patriot Mobile is America's only Christian conservative wireless provider. It offers dependable nationwide coverage on all three major networks, and it makes it possible to get service in your area and in places like East Palestine, where we were very hard up for cell phone service, and we were glad that we use Patriot Mobile. They offer a coverage guarantee. If you're not happy, you can switch for free. All of this plus the knowledge that you are supporting a free speech, sanctity of life, Second Amendment, military supporting, first responder supporting company. With U.S.-based customer service, PatriotMobile.com backslash Benny. Right now, you'll get free activation today. Use the code Benny. PatriotMobile.com backslash Benny. Right now, use the activation code Benny. Yo, okay, so, ladies and gentlemen, let's activate right now. When it, and, and when it pertains to Donald Trump going to prison, we are going to be using all of our resources. We have been huddling. We have been calling. We have been researching what is going on with Donald Trump. And we have even more anger and fire in our bloodstream now than ever. After the last 24 hours of really watching and diving into this case, it has become more and more clear that not only this is this political persecution, this is election rigging. This is election rigging. 
There are po people inside of Donald Trump's orbit who we called that are talking to us about what this is really about. And what this is really about is trying to make Donald Trump so toxic that donors won't donate to him. It costs hundreds of millions of dollars to run a presidential campaign. It costs a billion dollars to run the 2020 campaign. Part of the strategy here is to make Donald Trump a toxic asset so that people just sort of get turned off so that there's more and more drama. Now we're speaking with people directly on Donald Trump's campaign team, directly within his orbit. We're talking about what's actually going on here. And so ladies and gentlemen, let us present to you one more time what's actually happening here. A lady named Horseface, lovingly called by Donald Trump, Stormy Daniels. She is a porn star. Uh, she alleges that she had an affair with Donald Trump in 2006. Now she was shopping that story for nigh on a decade. Stormy Daniels was trying to get paid out from this story that she had an affair with a rich guy. Okay? This is a normal thing if you are a celebrity. It's called a nuisance lawsuit. A nuisance lawsuit is when Brad Pitt bumps into you at the Starbucks and you spill your coffee. And then you sue him for a million bucks. And then he just pays you a little bit of money to go away. He doesn't want the press. Nobody needs that. Ain't nobody got time for that. So famous people often get nuisance lawsuits. Uh, is Donald Tr did, did Donald Trump do this? Well, he denies it. Donald Trump uh, certainly denies it and denied it in court and actually won in court against Stormy Daniels. Federal judge throws out Stormy Daniels' lawsuit. This is from 2018 versus Trump. Now I can go after Horseface, a third-rate lawyer in the great state of Texas. Uh, she will confirm the letter that she signed. She knows nothing about me. So what happens here is you get a payout and then you sign an NDA to say you're just going to go away. This is really like par for the course for celebrities and really rich people. This does happen a lot. You may like it, you may not, but that's just the way it works when you have a lot of money, okay? People take advantage of you and they extort you. Now, why are we saying that this didn't happen? Well, because it's Stormy Daniels said it didn't happen. This is from 2018 publicity tour. Stormy Daniels says she didn't have an affair with Trump. That it was all made up to get money. That's what she said. Her lawyer backed her up with this. So in case you're wondering if these are specious charges, yeah, of course they are. She straight up admitted it. Now, what's going on with this case pursuant the past legal rulings. Well, Donald Trump won this case. Stormy Daniels was ordered to pay $300,000 to Donald Trump. So that's how bad things went for Stormy Daniels. And her lawyer, her na lawyer's name was Michael Avenatti, you may recall, Michael Avenatti, the guy who told The View that his, all of his fantasies include handcuffs. Well, he's now in handcuffs. Michael Avenatti's in federal prison. Multiple federal charges found guilty. Why? Well, because he defrauded Stormy Daniels of all uh, people. How much money? $300,000 worth, actually. The amount that she owes Donald Trump. <laughs> Doesn't get any better than that. Ladies and gentlemen, a couple of things here. One, they said that this is political interference, a campaign fund usage. That's what they're trying to claim here. That Donald Trump settling something of his personal business uh, that both parties denied, but whatever, Donald Trump settling that thing was using campaign cash. He used his lawyer to do it, and that was a campaign... Uh, contribution to himself, and he, there's a lot of rules for campaign contributions. And so he violated the law by doing that. There are so many issues with this, but first off, on its face, Bill Clinton did the same thing, but way worse. A woman that actually had sex with Bill Clinton when he violated his wedding vows to Hillary Clinton for the 497th time. Uh, a woman named Paula Jones was paid by Bill Clinton while he was president. Whew, take a breath. $850,000. Now, Stormy Daniels made $100,000, so, so this is eight times what Donald Trump paid to Stormy Daniels, and Bill Clinton was president in the White House. Donald Trump was not president when this happened with Stormy Daniels, okay? So Bill Clinton paid off a woman to stay quiet that he literally had an affair with, and this was while Bill Clinton was in the White House. This is from the New York Times. The date is 1999. Bill Clinton was president. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, Hillary Clinton did the same thing. So Hillary Clinton actually used campaign cash to fund the Steele dossier, the PP dossier on Donald Trump. Now, Hillary Clinton had to pay a fine. Is Hillary Clinton in handcuffs? Well, of course she, she should be. Lock her up. But like, no, actually, sadly, Bill Clinton and Hillary Clinton still roam the streets of Little St. James. Oh, wait, they shut that down. Okay, they still roam the streets of the Upper East Side. Um, and Hillary Clinton was nearly pooped on, actually, at a Broadway show. We're going to cover that in, in a moment. But yes, somebody actually, somebody... Somebody pooped in the aisle next to Hillary Clinton at a Broadway show. Crazy stuff. Maybe get out of New York. But that's not what this is about. Ladies and gentlemen, Hillary Clinton misused campaign cash. And oh, yes, the Messiah himself, Barack Obama, misused can can campaign cash and had to pay hundreds of thousands of dollars in fees to the 
Federal Election Commission, ladies and gentlemen. How about our uh, current resident of the nursing home Oval Office, uh, Joe Biden? Well, Joe Biden, if you're talking about like the abuse of women or the treatment of women, Joe Biden has uh, right now a outstanding uh, allegation of deep and abiding sexual misconduct against somebody named Tara Reid. Tara Reid will be joining the program this week. We want to get her insight on this. Tara Reid tweeting uh, that... Hey, Joe Biden sexually attacked her. She's not a porn star and she never received any money from him, but he still sexually assaulted her. Believe all women, right? Yes, of course. Unless, uh, 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 you know, it's an allegation against Joe Biden, who we all know is an absolute serial uh, sexual degenerate, cheated on his wife, who, who was in the hospital at the time with Jill Biden, who was the babysitter. This is all, this is all true, right? This is all true. This is, she, Bill, Jill Biden was the babysitter hooked up with Jill Biden while she was married to someone else. This has all been covered. And then of course he raises Hunter Biden. So, you know, just top tier moral acuity there for that Biden family. Definitely. Uh, Hunter Biden stripping his brother's dead brother's widow. These people are goblins. They're goblins. They're mutants. Okay, so these are your moral betters. Now they're going after Donald Trump, and these are the people that are going after Donald Trump. Okay? So just to give you a little bit of a wrap up here of like what shaky grounds they're on. Now it gets even shakier. You want to talk about rattling the rope here. It gets even shakier when you include the fact that Donald Trump is way past the statute of limitations here. So statute of limitations for a felony in the state of New York is five years. Statute of limitations for a misdemeanor, which this is, is two years. So what they're having to do is they're having to concoct this absolute cobbled out of whole cloth legal theory that essentially accelerates this misdemeanor to a felony wherein Barack Obama, Bill Clinton, Hillary Clinton, they all have to pay little fines. Donald Trump is apparently going to go to prison for this. Well, at least that's what they want. And we're going to get to all of it, ladies and gentlemen, how this is all now collapsing. Let us begin with a man that just to uh, tossed, tossed an incendiary uh, napalm mine into the middle of this fever dream, which is all it is, right? It's all a fever dream. The fever dream is the person, the meme, right? The person that screams, no, no, screaming lib, right? Screaming lib, that person, do we have that clip, guys? That person has been told for the better part of seven years, Screaming lib person, that mentally disturbed, mentally damaged mutant, that person has been told for the better part of seven years that Donald Trump's criminal and he's going to go to jail. 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 There's exhaustion on the right as well. Like people think that John Durham's going to put people in jail, right? For Russiagate. Unfortunately, the reality is no, probably not. It's very sad, but it's true. So, ladies and gentlemen, the reality is that the left has lied to their base for seven years their base has gotten bunk nothing. Donald Trump has been exonerated of everything. He's the most acquitted president in American history. And they have had to eat crow time and time again. And it's starting to taste really, really bad. It's not good to eat crow. And so we got to get Trump on something. And more importantly, well, right, right about the time that Joe Biden's personal finances drop. And these people, these brain damaged individuals from the left their little goblin NPC army, they are suddenly starting to see who Joe Biden is and that they've been lied to. And holy crap, we got to change the news cycle. So the this is all being done by, again, the in favor of and to placate the brain-damaged infantile left who has absolutely no grounding in reality. They've been told to and lied to time and time again by their masters in the corporate press and the demon spawn DNC media, they've been lied to again and again and again that Donald Trump is a bad guy and he deserves to go to prison. Now, they've failed every single time. And so now, as Joe Biden's fate is collapsing, as Donald Trump is spiking in the polls, they're going to bring this charge. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I think we finally have the person that this is all brought for, the screaming lib. Ladies and gentlemen, let me introduce you to the person that actually this is all about. Because it's not about legal theory. It's certainly not about the law. It's certainly not about Donald Trump doing anything wrong. Uh, this is the person that this entire news cycle is for. Take Through all of that opposition, Donald J. Trump is now president of the United States. President Obama.
<laughs> Expect more of that. Expect it. Okay? So, the man who... <laughs> Good. We should just do an entire... Let's just do an entire show. Let's just do an entire show with this person. Oh, pat them on the head. Oh, I'm so sorry. Zahair. Definitely a Zahair. Ladies and gentlemen, Robert Costello. Let me introduce you to the former legal advisor to the ex-Trump attorney, Michael Cohen. He appeared before a grand jury in Manhattan's district investigation into the former President Trump on Monday. He testified that Cohen is a serial liar. So a lot of this case hinges on uh, Donald Trump's disgraced, co convicted perjurer lawyer, a guy named Michael Cohen. This guy was the lawyer who pushed the hush money to Stormy Daniels, okay? So that's his connection. This is Michael Cohen's connection. Man, Michael Cohen's looking rough these days, by the way. Costello testified to the grand jury for more than two hours as Manhattan District Attorney Alvin Bragg considered bringing charges against Donald Trump. The possible charges stem from a $130,000 hush money, blah, blah, blah. We covered all that. Federal prosecutors in the U.S. Attorney's Office in the Southern District of New York opted out of charging Trump for the Stormy Daniels payment in 2019. The Federal Election Commission also tossed the investigation in 2021. The DOJ has refused to investigate this. So they've lost on this issue every single time that has been brought. Every time they've brought this up, they've lost. With Biden's DOJ, with the Federal Election Commission, the Southern District of New York. So now it falls to Alvin Bragg, dimwit, low IQ, Alvin Bragg, ladies and gentlemen, try and bring these charges. And it's not going well. Watch. Meantime, preparing for the unprecedented law enforcement bracing for the potential arrest of former President Trump. And we have an update now on the timing. Good morning. I'm John Roberts in Washington. Bill and Dana are off. And good morning to you. Good early morning to you, John. Nice to be with you today. I'm Jillian Turner. This is America's Newsroom. Former President Trump said he would be arrested today as part of a hush money investigation. But the Manhattan grand jury, we're learning, is still, as of now, hearing from witnesses. Law enforcement source tells Fox News not to expect an indictment and arraignment until next week. OK, so maybe next week, maybe never. The reason why they're long walking this and slow walking this is because not only will they see revolt and they're seeing revolt from even the left. And we're going to cover all of that. Ladies and gentlemen, when Elon Musk, Mike Tyson and Chris Rock start backing Donald Trump, you have an issue. But they're also seeing a revolt from inside of their own police department. Check this out from John Cardillo. He's a former New York police officer uh, and a high ranking one at that. John Cardillo saying New York law enforcement sources are telling me that the Manhattan DA office is in chaos. 60% of the office want no part in this. They want Bragg to stop with the nonsense. They know there is no crime. This is all being driven by a small group of radicals at the top. A small group of radicals that is getting absolutely BTFO'd by this Robert Costello. Robert Car Costello is now testifying before this grand jury, which will suggest an indictment or not, and Robert Carcello is saying, hey, yo, your star witness is a piece of garbage. Watch. I'm the one who decided to do this. A lot of people cautioned me against it because I had nothing to gain. The only thing I'm doing is trying to tell the truth to the grand jurors because I read all these lies in the, in the media that are being promoted by one side. If you see the full picture, you know, listen, if they want to go after Donald Trump and they have solid evidence, so be it. But Michael Cohn is far from solid evidence. This guy, by any prosecutor's standard, and I used to be deputy chief of the criminal division in the Southern District of New York, I wouldn't have touched a guy like Michael Cohn, especially if he's a convicted perjurer. Not to mention, as I said, the 50 to 100 lies he told us that are in those 330 emails. So Michael Cohen used this man as a defense attorney. This guy is not some paid shill. He's doing this of his own fruition, saying, this is wrong. This guy's not even a Trump supporter. So this Robert Costello, again, his credentials are former legal advisor uh, to ex-Trump attorney Michael Cohen. Uh, this is a man who worked for the Manhattan District Attorney. This is a man who's worked for the Southern District of New York. This is a man who has all of the credentials you could possibly want. He was on Tucker Carlson's show last night saying uh, the Manhattan DA knows they have no case here. I just sat in front of the Manhattan DA today and they didn't even ask me pertinent questions of the case. This is a witch hunt involving actual literal witches and demons. It's fun. Should be happening right around the time of Halloween. Everyone can wear a costume. Check it out. Costello and Tucker last night. Um, I got my point across, although it was clear to me 
that the Manhattan DA's office did not want to get to the truth. I need to explain that a little bit. I called them up uh, after I saw Michael Cohn on TV stating things that he said he was going to tell the grand jury and had told the grand jury that were contrary to what he told us when we first represented him in April of 2018. So I'm sitting at home watching these lies, and I said, I've got to do something about it. I don't represent Donald Trump, but I do stand for justice, and I think I have a legal obligation to inform both sides. So that's what I did. So the lawyers now who are involved in this case are beginning to break. They're beginning to say, wait a second, this has absolutely no legal precedent. How the hell are you going to do this? Now, why would you ever do this? Also, more importantly, of course, this is political persecution, but it's also election rigging, and you're going to break the nation. Tucker Carlson did a great monologue last night saying once you use the legal system essentially to impugn and to lock up your opponents, you do become a third world banana republic. And nobody in the legal profession wants that to happen. People don't want that, right? You don't want to live under those kind of regimes. We've been to Cuba. We've been to the Mideast. You don't want to live under these dictatorships and these tyrannies. And so even Trump hating, frothing at the mouth, Watergate lawyers are going on CNN's airwaves going, what the hell are you doing here? We couldn't believe this clip from CNN last night. So we care so much about the show and about this audience and we love you. Shout out where you're watching from. I saw some people from New Zealand and Nova Scotia in the comment section while we were going live. I love seeing where everyone's from. This is a huge audience. There's a powerful audience. We're 100% organic. We're owned by nobody. The show is owned by you. We do the work and we show up for you, ladies and gentlemen. And we even, this is how much we love you, watched CNN. Yes, we watched CNN for you because we were cared about how they covered this and our jaw was on the floor last night. They brought on, they dusted off an old crusty dandruffy Watergate lawyer who is a Trump hating lunatic and they dragged him on to Aaron Burnett's show and they said, yo, what do you think about this case? And this guy just absolutely dropped weaponized uranium truth bomb on to this case saying, this is not the case to arrest Donald Trump. And what the hell are you all doing? You're losing your left flank here. Check it out. So let me just ask you the bottom line as you see it, Ben. Do you think there's any chance that Alvin Bragg does not indict Donald Trump at this point? I, I do think there is a chance. If a prosecutor does a thorough investigation and decides not to prosecute, he has not failed in his obligation. And I think Bob Costello's testimony, if nothing else, should cause uh, Mr. Bragg to at least pause and think if this is the right case. If there is the facts and the law, Donald Trump should be held accountable. But frankly, I don't think this is the case. And I think beyond a reasonable doubt that Bob Costello's testimony tips the scale in favor of not bringing this case. All right, John, thank you very much. I appreciate uh, your time uh, and the uh, the context thank that you, you bring to this. Trump hating Watergate prosecutor, a clearly deep state agent, is straight up saying, why are you bringing this case? You are not going to win this case. And Trump's legal team knows this. We're happy to announce that we'll be joined by Trump's legal team later in the week. Uh, and they will be coming on this program live to answer questions from you, from this audience. And we're setting up actually a module where you can send us questions and we can ask your questions to these people. We are an emissary for you. We are your representatives here in the media space. We love all of you and we thank you. But Donald Trump's legal team is saying, hey, we've already won this. They're not going to win this case. There's going to be a huge victory for Donald Trump. Donald Trump's actual lawyer, Joe Tacopina, was on Fox saying just that watch. But your sense is that it will, Joe? You know, I, I, I still hold out hope. I really do, Jeannie. I hold out hope that, that some sort of sanity is going to prevail inside of that office. I understand there's a lot of disgruntled employees in the Manhattan DA's office yeah, right well, now. Yeah. Hope I'm hoping, right. holding out hope that justice will prevail. And if that happens, then there will be no charge because it's a case that will die on the vine. This will be a lasting stain on the legacy of that DA's office. So they won't win this case. I promise you that. And you could play this tape back in a year from now. Um, they will not win this case. We will win it on the law. We'll win it on the facts. Wherever we go, we will win this case. So how bad has things actually gotten? Even on CNN, again, we're watching CNN, not because we like it. We want to see what the, what's the right way to say this? Like the level five psychopaths on the left, MSNBC is a level 10, like negative 11. These people are too far gone. 
all right, on MSNBC. You actually live inside a bizarro land over there. But on CNN, what are people saying? And again, we're bringing you the Trump-hating sycophants on CNN saying if this was anyone else, they wouldn't dream of bringing the case in Alvin Bragg Soros-funded DA. They wouldn't dare bring this case if it were any other human being on the planet. This is CNN admitting this on air. Watch. If his name were John Smith, Mellon Bragg would not be bringing this case. And so I think that's a real political problem. Yeah. So, again, the left flank, you're losing the left flank. You're losing the right flank. You're losing the middle. You're going to hand Donald Trump a massive political victory here. And more importantly, you're going to expose exactly what Soros-funded DAs are all about. Because what has Alvin Bragg been doing inside of the District of New York? Alvin Bragg is the prosecuting attorney. That means that he is in charge of what gets brought forth for cases, how severe those cases are, what the punishments for these cases are. These are very big roles. These are very, very big decisions. And these district attorneys have a huge outsized say in law and order inside of your city. Now, if Alvin Bragg was some type of like Sheriff Joe Arpaio, right? If he was buckling up, his swashbuckling in to every single court case, he was strapping on his boots and he was saying, hey, maximum sentences for all criminals. Everyone goes to jail. You're all doomed. No crime in my city. You jaywalked, you're going to jaywalk right into Rikers Island. If that was who Alvin Bragg was, then at the very least, charging Donald Trump would have some type of like symbiosis with reality, right? Maybe he's just, maybe he's just, you know, absolutely, he's just so brimming with piss and vinegar that he just wants to charge everyone for every crime ever, right? He's a Rudy Giuliani when Rudy was mayor. Rudy wanted every criminal charge in New York. It actually created an incredible New York City. And it created a really peaceful and a very safe New York City. Rudy Giuliani pulled this bit. But Alvin Bragg's actually the opposite. Where Alvin Bragg's saying, yo, if you murder, if you rape, if you kill on our streets, if you rob, then you're not going to get any punishments. In fact, you're going to be released to do it again and again and again and again. It's like Bane out of Batman. He's just going to rip open the prisons and allow all the criminals free. This is who Alvin Bragg is. He's not Harvey Dent. He's Bane from the Batman universe. And that's made very clear with recent reporting. Watch. Legal experts say the potential charge that he faces does not rise to a felony. And, you know, critics have been saying that Bragg follows a progressive soft on crime agenda. That in some cases, his office has released violent felons back on the streets. I interviewed Republican New York State Chairman Ed Cox, the former son-in-law of President Richard Nixon, and he told me that Bragg is being soft on crime only when it comes to the president. Just a misdemeanor with respect to record keeping here in New York State. That's the state claim. For it to be a felony, it has to be connected to a felony federal case. That case was looked at years ago by the Southern District of New York, by the Department of Justice, and they passed on it for a good reason. Well, paying hush money for an affair during a, a campaign as, and also prosecuted as a campaign violation has been tried before. And the result? Well, not guilty. You may remember former presidential candidate, North Carolina Senator John Edwards. He beat a case that some say echoes the one that could be tried against Trump. Edwards was charged with funneling almost $1 million in campaign donations to Riley Hunter, his mistress, who he met in Manhattan, and with whom he later admitted had a love child. It was a federal case, not a local one. Prosecutors then claimed that he used that money to try and conceal the affair from voters, but Edwards claims the funds were a gift and it was not trying to hide the affair during the campaign, but from his wife, who later died of cancer. Well, the jury did acquit Edwards on one of the counts, but was deadlocked on the rest. And in the end, prosecutors dropped the charges and declined to even retry him. So that's how the American judicial system works. All you need is a hung jury. All you need is one jury member, essentially, to hold out. Even for absolute devious cretins, like creepy John Edwards. Ugh, that guy. What the hell is wrong with that guy? So he's like having illegitimate children out of wedlock. Remember when that guy was like being cast as Barack Obama light? Barack Obama white? When everyone was like, oh, John Edwards, he's the next John F. Kennedy. And he's having kids out of wedlock with his campaign staffers trying to hide it from his wife with cancer. 
And then he went to his donors to ask them for millions of dollars in order to pay this woman off so that it didn't become a political liability. Was he convicted? No. Now, was he a Democrat? Yes. And that is a big issue here. So this is causing a lot of people to ask questions, even about our own party. Last night, in Tucker's absolute flamethrower of a monologue, he asked a question about George W. Bush. Why isn't George W. Bush in prison if we're prosecuting former presidents? Why not bring up the fact that George W. Bush lied us into a war with Iraq and Afghanistan that was my generation's Vietnams that took the lives of a bunch of good young men and women and cost us our treasure, cost us our civil liberties, gave us the Patriot Act, gave us the super weaponized state that we currently live under, the censorship regime. Well, like the guy who did all that was George W. Bush. So in case, you know, if we're locking up former presidents, maybe, maybe start there. Tucker, take it away. But no matter what happens, if this indictment arrives, no matter who you voted for or plan on voting for, make no mistake, this is a turning point for the country. Now, the headline here is not that they're being unfair to Donald Trump again, though, of course, they are, or even that Trump is the former president of the United States. <laughs> Who cares? <laughs> I mean, though, as long as we are indicting retired presidents, where are the charges against George W. Bush for invading Iraq under false pretenses and giving permanent normalized trade relations to China, which completely wrecked our economy? Where are those charges? Don't hold your breath. In Washington, wrecking your own country is not considered a crime. And of course, George W. Bush knows that well, which is why he doesn't seem worried at all. Criticizing the ruling class, that's what they indict you for. But either way, Donald Trump's former job as president of the United States is not really the point here. Yes, of course you can indict former presidents if they've done something wrong. That's not what this is about. The headline here is that there is, as noted, a presidential race in progress right now. And if you check the polls, you will find that Trump is leading the Republican field. That's the unprecedented thing. Taking out your opponent using the justice system. This may irritate some people. I have veterans in my family. I have men and women in my direct family who served in Iraq and Afghanistan. And I speak on behalf of them when they say, how, how dare you? How dare you lie us into war? These people are Republicans. They're conservatives. And I, as a young, bright-eyed teenager, supported George W. Bush lock, stock, and barrel. It's okay to admit that you were lied to. It's okay to admit that your government lies to you. That is actually the point of knowledge. The point of wisdom is to admit when you were wrong. I want to apologize for my past support of George W. Bush and the regime that brought us the spying super state deep state because there would be no such thing without the Patriot Act. George W. Bush was for that lock, stock and barrel. He was for foreign wars that gave us nothing but humiliation. How did Afghanistan turn out for us? Well, I can show you 13 flag draped caskets from just a year ago, but more than that, I can show you 10,000 plus flag draped caskets of my fellow countrymen, my generation that went over there on a lie. Now, I don't speak for all of them, but I speak for myself and I say that I renounce George W. Bush and Tucker Carlson is exactly right. Lying us into war and normalizing trade relationships with China, the communist Chinese, uh, are two of the worst things to ever happen. And so many things that we fight today are because George W. Bush and his incompetent administration. Ladies and gentlemen. Now, did he do all this nefariously? I don't know. I don't know. Is, was he so dumb that this was just happening behind the scenes? Was it a, a Joe Biden situation, essentially, right? Where he was being run by evil people? I'm not sure. I'm not sure. But those are the, those are the results. And I think that it's an important thing as a man to just admit when you were wrong. And my past support of George W. Bush was totally and completely wrong. And I think we have to admit that now and, uh, and, and try to make up for it. And that's what an honest person would do. What an honest person would do would also be to go after Alvin Bragg. That's what's happening right now in the United States House. They're going to be subpoenaing Alvin, Alvin Bragg. Man, you want the smoke. You want the heat. This is how you do it. We're going to cover that in just one second. It's going to take us a lot of energy to do so. Ladies and gentlemen, and energy is what we bring to this show. Now, I used to drink out of a red Solo cup my iced coffee. Now I got my sweet blackout coffee mug and my sweet blackout coffee brutal awakening. That's how I have the energy to do this show. Blackout coffee. 
is a winner in the parallel economy. They're growing like crazy. They're a conservative coffee company, and they will not let you down. This is the coffee that tastes great, and it gives me the kick that I need every single morning. Got a bunch of little kids. Okay, I am exhausted. We are waking up all hours of the evening, all hours of the morning, and so I got to have the energy to do the show, especially now. Please, ladies and gentlemen, consider checking out my friends at Blackout Coffee. They're an incredible American company and a Florida-based company from just up north of us here in Tampa. This is a coffee company that is 100% committed to conservative values, from the sourcing of their beans, the roasting process, to their customer support and shipping. They have an incredible work ethic, and they accept no compromise on quality. Go to blackoutcoffee.com backslash Benny and use the coupon code Benny for 20% off your offer. Ladies and gentlemen, 20% off. The best coffee around. Blackoutcoffee.com backslash Benny. Somebody who probably wishes they could black out, given the current news cycle, is Alvin Bragg. I think he's bitten off far more than he can chew. And based on the look of things, Al Alvin Bragg bites a lot of things and chews a lot of things. Uh, Alvin Bragg is going to be dragged into Congress, apparently, to answer questions about the politically motivated Trump case. Chairman of the House Oversight Committee on Monday demanded that Manhattan DA Alvin Bragg hand over documents to testify about what plainly appears to be politically motivated prosecution of former President Trump. Judiciary Chair Jim Jordan and Oversight Chair James Comer wrote the Manhattan DA's office that his plans to charge Trump would be in an unprecedented abuse of prosecutorial authority. If these reports are accurate, your actions will erode confidence in the even-handed application of justice and unilaterally interfere in the course of the 2024 presidential election, Jordan Comer wrote. In light of the serious consequences and accidents, we expect you to testify. Whoa. So they're going to throw Alvin Bragg under the hot lights, baby. Alvin Bragg. Uh, could probably use some time uh, under the hot lights in a sauna, so on and so forth. It doesn't necessarily look like a healthy individual, and we look forward to seeing him testify, ladies and gentlemen. So multiple people are slamming this indictment as nonsense and partisan and saying that it will help him. It will help him. Andrew McCarthy, former chief assistant of the U.S. Attorney of Southern District of New York, who has been a fan of Trump's over the weekend, blasted Bragg's case as nonsense and blatantly partisan. Now, you're losing the people who are clearly soft Trump allies here, like Andrew McCarthy, but you're also losing people like who are not Trump allies at all, who actually hate Donald Trump, like Chris Rock. Chris Rock, who has a, I think the number one streaming show right now on Netflix, Chris Rock's stand-up special, has been received with great aplomb. Chris Rock was at an event in Washington, D.C., the Kennedy Honors Award, and comedian Chris Rock warned lawmakers that arresting former President Donald Trump would only make him more popular. Rock made the comments in Washington, D.C. at an event honoring, honoring Adam Sandler, he began poking fun at the well-connected Capitol crowd, which included Speaker Pelosi. Are you guys really going to arrest Trump? Rock asks. Do you know this is going to go on and make him more popular? It's like arresting Tupac. He's just going to sell more records. Are you stupid? Chris Rock said to the audience. Man, this is great. Trump uh, effing a porn star and paid off someone so his wife wouldn't find out. That's romantic, Rock said. We've all been cheated on. Don't you wish the person that cheated on you paid somebody off so you wouldn't find out? Okay, so Chris Rock in his own way. We have a clip of that audio. The video hasn't been released or we've been playing you that, but it was recorded and posted. Check it out. Uh, before I start, uh, talk about Adam and the CNN people. You guys really gonna arrest Trump? <laughs> People are backing up Donald Trump from all corners. Mike Tyson, speaking of being in Trump's corner, Mike Tyson defends Trump. I don't think he should go to jail. Legendary professional boxer Mike Tyson told Breitbart News that he does not think Donald Trump should go to jail. Tyson, who was attending a different event at House GOP retreat in Orlando, Florida, at the same hotel complex, ended up running into House Speaker Kevin McCarthy. Sometime later, Breitbart News caught up with Tyson in the lobby of the Ritz-Carlton. McCarthy and I... I was happy to see him. I think politics is what politics are, Tyson said. They gave agendas. They have agendas, and that's all. It doesn't have to be a bad agenda, but it's an agenda. I don't know. I don't think he should go to jail. I don't know. I'm not a politician. I don't want anyone to go to jail, Mike Tyson said. Mike Tyson he, uh, has been a sort of like, I don't know, interesting 
arc. He's been on Tucker Carlson's show a couple of times. He's had some very non-woke uh, takes recently. And Mike Tyson having a pretty, pretty incredible ride here now defending Donald Trump, along with Elon Musk, who tweeted that Donald Trump will win in a landslide if you put him in jail. If you try and arrest Trump, he will win in a landslide. That's what's the, the world's most powerful, most followed, richest man says about Donald Trump. And of course, Elon Musk, very smart guy. You can start a rocket ship company. You're a very smart guy. Somebody who's never created anything good, never created a product. Never done anything other than essentially sell the brass on the Titanic. Bet against America as America collapses has been Donald has been it's been Joe Biden, Donald Trump's rival in the 2024 election. Joe Biden has built nothing except for his own fraudulent, corrupt family empire, and now we are starting to see the results of the bank records that have been subpoenaed by Congress. And you are seeing massive amounts of money flowing from the Communist Chinese Party to the bank coffers of the Biden family and then being laundered inside of that family. So it's a little strange, a little suspicious here that suddenly you get a Trump arrest news cycle. Trump's suddenly going to be arrested. This was a dead case. They call it a zombie case legally. This wasn't a real case. They suddenly bring it back from the dead, get out the shovels, rip it up out of the... Ground reanimate its corpse right as we're starting to learn the details about Joe Biden's criminality. Now, that's a little curious. And the person learning those details is a friend of the show. His name's James Comer. And he was saying, ah, oh, this is a little odd timing. We suddenly start to realize how corrupt the Bidens are, and suddenly they're going to arrest Trump. Got it? Watch. Well, it's very odd uh, that this would come out just the very next day after I revealed bank records which showed that the Biden family, the president in particular, hasn't been truthful uh, with respect to his family receiving payments directly from the Chinese Communist Party. So it almost looks like it's a, an effort to detract. But at the very least, it's another example of two-tier system of justice. Look, we've been looking into these uh, classified documents. We saw the, the FBI raided mar Largo. For, for one set of supposedly mishandled classified documents, but yet Joe Biden's had at least five different locations of mishandled classified documents, and they give him days and days to go in and clean up with his attorney. So this looks to me like it's another example of a two-tier system of justice at the DOJ. So, ladies and gentlemen, it is a two-tiered system of justice confirmed. There are confirmed felonies on Joe Biden's laptop. It's not just us Shouting that at the top of our lungs. These are from legal experts. A thread on Twitter lays it all out beautifully from Kanoa the Great. Thread, the Biden family has committed over two dozen federal felonies in connection with the millions they made from China, specifically FARA violations and money laundering charges that would put the Trump family or any other ordinary citizen behind bars for decades. For example, Hunter Biden illegally represented a convicted Chinese spy, Patrick Ho, for $1 million, a clear violation of the Foreign Registration Act, subsequently laundered that illegally obtained money to James Biden and Sarah Biden. The Marco Polo Association report meticulously documented those claims with primary source evidence, including Patrick Ho's attorney engagement letter signed by Hunter Biden, Hunter's bank statements detailing the illegally obtained money transfers to himself, James, and Sarah Biden. This is showing Ho's criminal case. The FBI has had this laptop for nigh on seven years. 2018 was when they first got their hot hands on this laptop. Check this out, ladies and gentlemen. Marco Polo released a 630-page report with 2,000 citations that thoroughly documents 459 crimes committed by the Biden family. So they're going to make up a charge against Donald Trump, they literally out of thin air. They're going to manufacture a charge against Donald Trump. They're going to bring it when the federal government, when the district attorney, when the state attorney... And when the DOJ have all refused to bring any charges against Donald Trump, a case that he's already won and he's getting paid out for, they're going to manufacture that case while we sit here with 140 business crimes, 191 sex crimes, 128 drug crimes. Ladies and gentlemen, do you think that the Bidens have committed more crime than the Trump family? Well, the answer is, of course, empirically, yes. You will have to show me the evidence of Donald Trump's crimes. Now, I can show you the evidence 
of Joe Biden's crimes. You can ask yourself exactly what the FBI is doing, what the hell our federal government is doing as it comes to processing and charging this crime. They've had this laptop for the better part of seven years. The year is 2023. Ladies and gentlemen, Ron Johnson was asked about this. Asked about this. This Marco Poli report is a big deal, and we're going to be going through more of it on the show. We're going to be showing you and detailing so that you are knowledgeable about exactly the crimes that the Bidens are guilty of, that they committed. Ladies and gentlemen, Ron Johnson, one of the best senators in America, was asked about the crimes of the Bidens recently on Meet the Press. went like this. Senator, do you have a crime that you think Hunter Biden committed? Because I've yet to see anybody explain it is not a crime to make money off your last name. So, Chuck, you ought to read the Marco Polo report uh, where they detail all kinds of potential crimes. So the Marco Polo report is something that we're going to be going through quite a bit. But this tweet thread has really, really enlightened us to what's inside of it. And it's important for you to know. On November 18th, the FBI agents arrested Hunter Biden's business partner, Patrick Ho, the spy chief of China, for bribing the president of Chad and Uganda's foreign minister. CEFC, the Chinese oil company, China Oil, offered African officials millions of dollars in cash in exchange for their oil rights. That's exactly what they offered the Bidens. The Bidens were selling American oil to China. This was a shell company for the Communist Chinese Party, and they were using the Bidens to sell American energy to them. The Bidens were selling out your nation to the Communist Chinese. That shows you where their allegiance is. When the spy chief of China was arrested, his first call was to Joe Biden's brother, James Biden. The New York Times reporter asked why Hunter was Patrick Ho's first call. He called incorrectly. He called James Biden, not Hunter Biden. Hunter Biden illegally represented convicted spy Patrick Ho for $1 million dollars not registering under the Foreign Agent Registration Act. Here's the attorney engagement letter signed by Hunter Biden. You can see it right here on your screen. Hunter Biden accepted $1 million from Chinese spy Patrick Ho. Chinese spy because our own federal government calls him a Chinese spy. Saw the names of FBI agents on behalf of Patrick Ho in clear violation of the FARA Act. One month after Xi detained Ye Jiaming, who's another business partner of the Bidens, an email from Wells Fargo confirmed a million dollar wire transfer hit Hunter's account after he requested a retainer from Patrick Ho. Hunter immediately asked how to access the illegally acquired funds sent to him by this shell company. James and Sarah Biden also benefited from Hunter's illegal, unregistered representation. James sent multiple fraudulent invoices of $82,000 for a monthly retainer to the shell company. Now, it would be so easy for us to prosecute this case if, let's say, we had Joe Biden on the record talking about it, telling us that this was happening. Oh, lucky for us, we do. Voicemail from Hunter Biden's laptop. This is the voice of Joe Biden, President of the United States, admitting that Hunter might be in the clear based on a New York Times report on the Communist Party of China. Oh, my God. Listen. Hey, pal, it's Dad. It's 815 um, on uh, Wednesday night. If you get a chance, give me a call. Nothing urgent. I just want to talk to you. I thought the article, at least the thing on online, that's going to be printed tomorrow in the Times, was good. I think it's clear. And uh, anyway, um, if you get a chance, give me a call. I love you. Is this the way that innocent people talk to each other? Do you, do you call your son or daughter, like, after a sporting event and go, I think you're in the clear? Do you call your business partner and go, I think you're in the clear? This is not how innocent people talk. The Bidens sold access to the highest level of the U.S. government to officials working for Chinese intelligence. Ladies and gentlemen, in 2017, Hunter Biden sent an email agreeing to a rate of $10 million per year and a three-year guarantee of $30 million for introductions alone. This is simply selling access to the United States government. Now, it would be great to have some reporters who would actually ask questions about this. It would be wonderful to have real reporters, real journalists inside of the press pool in the White House asking these questions, but we don't actually have a press secretary, do we? We don't actually have a free press in America. We have a Praetorian Guard whose job it is, is not to speak truth to power, but to speak power to truth, meaning they defend and represent the powerful and attack the rest of us who want to know about the Biden's business dealings. This is no better demonstrated 
than the reporter Simon Atiba. Simon Atiba is an African journalist, and he is regularly the one who's asking unsanctioned questions of Corinne Jean-Pierre. Now, Corinne Jean-Pierre, or as we call her, Cringe Jean-Pierre, was yesterday at the White House, because, you know, there's nothing else important happening, uh, in a grotesque demonstration of indifference to the people of East Palestine who got their town nuked, to the people who are having their bank accounts collapsed right now in the largest banking structural failure and financial structural failure perhaps in American history, certainly since the Great Depression, for the people who care about nuclear war and World War III and about China allying with Russia, the one thing you're not supposed to let happen, the absolute and total failure of our intelligence agencies, you know, there's some like big things happening around the country. Even questions about Donald Trump and this nonsense charge against him. Those are important questions, along with the questions about Joe Biden and his Chinese business dealings. But instead, Corinne Jean-Pierre brought out some TV stars from a streaming show about soccer. Ted Lasso's the name of the show, and she brought some TV stars in because that's what's important right now television stars. That's what our White House is talking about. They just don't care. Th their indifference to you is borderline, is bordering on, on cruel and malevolent. Well, anyway, Simon is the person who actually ended up asking a real question during this pantomime fraud of a press secretary outing. And it went like this. It was kind of beautiful. Check it out. What you are doing, you are making a monthly of the first amendment. It's been seven months. You've not called on me. You've not know my message yet. I'm saying that does not right. Does not right. One times welcome, guys. <laughs> welcome. Welcome to the press briefing I'm room. It's not right. This is not China. This is not Russia. This is the United <laughs> States. This is the White House. No, it's been seven months. I sent you here to the rest of us are here too, pal. It is been seven months. You guys have not done anything for me. If you have grievances, you should bring them to her later. I have like done that. I have done that. All right, my course. emails have been emailed. And the press corps is tired of dealing with this. It is about that. you, Simon. I understand that you get questions all the time and you don't the understand what it is to sit here for eight months and being discriminated eight against. I understand that you're in the front row and you feel comfortable and you get questions all the time. And there time. are people in the back who don't get any questions. Don't make assumptions about what the rest of us do. Mind your manners when you're in here. If you have a problem, you bring it up afterwards. What has just occurred this last 10, 15 minutes is unacceptable. Ladies and gentlemen, Simon Atiba has been the thorn inside of Cringe Jean-Pierre's paw for many, many press conferences. Before we welcome Simon to the show, we did have to play one final, one final meltdown, ladies and gentlemen. This is the only honest reporter in America. He'll be joining us here in just a moment, but you've got to check out his work, man. Simon Atiba, the only honest journalist, ladies and gentlemen. This is our nuclear cringe of the day. Nuclear cringe of the day. Cringe Jean-Pierre having a total and complete panic attack thanks to one single honest journalist in America. Check it out. It is not your turn. It is not your turn. You can't you can read the press briefing. You need to call from people across the room. She has a valid question. She's asking about the origin of COVID. I hear the question. Dr. Fauci is the best person. I, I hear your question, but we're not doing this the way you want it. This is a disrespect. Is it is. I'm done. Simon, I'm done. I'm Simon, I'm done. I'm done with you right now. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. You're taking time away from your colleagues. Go ahead. Only 13% of adults have got. Man, I would rather watch that than any sports highlight clip. That is far more important to our country than anything else that's happening right now. The freedom of the press is right up there in the First Amendment for a reason. And thank God it takes a reporter from Africa to actually understand how valuable freedom of the press is. Joining us now, we are honored to have Simon Atiba from Today News Africa.
Simon, thank you so much for coming on the program. We're a huge fan of your work. It's like bringing on a sports star or like a professional athlete. And we're, cause we watch from afar and we watch you perform. And we're like, man, good for him. He's actually practicing his first amendment rights. And it seems to be like you are maybe the only one in that room that actually cares about the first amendment. First of all, thank you for having me. Um, if you allow me, I want to respond to the women on the view because they just maligned me a few minutes ago, and 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 I would like to respond to them. Please. I've never I've never written Jai Beha. She, you know, she read something about you know me writing something about a woman's fat ass. I've never disrespected a woman in my life. I. You know, I've done only one job. I'm a journalist, two degrees. I've been attacked by pirates on the Gulf of Guinea, kidnapped in Nigeria and dumped in the woods. Um, I've been arrested in Cameroon doing an investigative report, kept in a cell without window. I've done only journalism. I'm serious with my job. Um, you know, trying to malign me the way they tried to malign me on The View. Uh, Whoopi Goldberg, um, uh, Joy Beha and 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 Sarah Hill. I'm a journalist. I, I you know it's a shame what you just did a few minutes ago. Um, you should be ashamed of yourself. You should be really ashamed of yourself. You didn't check my background uh, without trying to before you try to belittle me. And so I, I just wanted to say that first. The only person who said something that was a bit sensible was Sonny Hustin. You know, it doesn't really make sense that President Biden is hosting 50 African leaders in Washington, D.C., and the African journalist who is in the room covering Africa, U.S.-Africa relations, doesn't get to be called on even once. And if you're okay with that, if you're okay with the Biden administration discriminating against a Black person, uh, then, uh, you, you, know, I'm, I, I, you know, I'm disappointed. It does seem discriminatory and it seems endemic in the room because now the other reporters and the White House Correspondents Association, whose only job it is, and they, get, they make a lot of money, everyone pays them, the only job it is for the White House Correspondents Association is to protect you, to protect your right to ask questions and to make powerful people uncomfortable at times. You clearly are very good at triggering cringe Jean Pierre, but it doesn't matter. That's your job. That's your protected right. That's why it's up in the First Amendment of our Constitution, the freedom of the press. Yeah, exactly. Uh, so this must be wild to have other journalists turn on you to protect, like a Praetorian guard, the powerful. Yes, it's Isn't tough. it their job to ask questions our job, like you? But our job is simple. Afflict the comfortable and comfort the afflicted. Yes. Not become friends with the powerful. Not do the bidding of the powerful. Not connive with the powerful, not collude with the presidency and the powerful to oppress the weak and the poor in the society. My job is simple. I need to ask questions that the American people really care about. I'm not there to be friend, and she doesn't have to like me. That's why I said yesterday on Tucker Carlson's show, she doesn't have to like me. She doesn't have to be my friend. My job is simple. And you know, when you do your job in that briefing room and you ask the tough questions and you don't send your questions in advance, you don't send topics in advance, what they do is they sideline you, they try to, um, you know, um, not call on you, and, 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 and which is really shameful because the First Amendment protects freedom, free speech, the freedom of the press, assembly, and the right to petition your government to seek redress. And, you know, the U.S. is still the most advanced country in the world because in the U.S., this is not China or Russia where you are free to ask a question because you be you, you can be arrested, jailed. At least that's why I'm here in the U.S. That's why everyone comes to the U.S. because here in the U.S., People are free to ask questions. At least that's how it should be. That's how it should be. And, you know, it's a shame that even in the Biden White House, we don't have that freedom. And I will shock you. A lot of people in that briefing room actually had more freedom when the former president, Donald Trump, was still in power. Yes. 
Well, I wanted to ask you about that because I, I distinctly remember being in the room myself. I've been inside of that press pool and I was shouted over by April Ryan. April Ryan screamed over me her question at, at uh, Sarah Sanders, it was at the time. And Jim Acosta regularly, everyone's familiar with Jim Acosta getting medals, getting awards, getting the White House Correspondents Association to represent him in court against Donald Trump when he would yell questions. And all they would do is ask questions, sometimes out of turn, but everyone defended them. So what's the difference between you and Jim Acosta or April Ryan or anyone else trying to get to the truth? Okay, so this is the difference. There was an agreement in the briefing room. They believed that Trump was a danger. He's trying to kill democracy. We lead us into third world war and we need to stop him. So they threw ethics and everything to the dustbin. They didn't respect it. They, some of them became activists. Some of them made a career. Like some of the people you mentioned there, they became famous for antagonizing, attacking the Trump administration. And so when you do it under Biden, when you ask the real questions, oh my God, no, you can't do that to Jen Psaki. You can do that to the press secretaries who were there during Trump, but you can't do that to KJP. You can't do that to um, Jen Psaki. And, you know, it shows you the double standard. Some of them were activists. They were not journalists. And all I'm trying to say is I just want to do my job. I just want to seek the truth. You know, true journalism is not in the noise. It's building connections with the people, getting to know people. If you don't have connection, if you can't build that relationship with the people, you miss the biggest story of the midterm, the classified document. You have billions of dollars. No one in that briefing room. How do you explain it? You say you're a good journalist. No one in the briefing room was able to know that the biggest story of the midterm was happening. They were in the briefing room. They have billions of dollars or hundreds of millions of dollars. They didn't get it. So they missed it. They failed. And after they failed, they tried to, you know, chase shadows. And, and they failed because then a lot of them, I know people in the briefing room who are doing a great job, but there are people in the briefing room, a lot of them who are not actually doing their job. They are no more building connection with the people, building trust with the people, getting to know the people, you know, not conniving and colluding with the government. When you do that, people lose trust and people don't watch you anymore. And people are no more watching. People are watching you more than they are reading some newspapers in this country. People are watching your videos more than they are watching videos on the New York Times and, and different media organizations, which shows you where the people are. The trust is low because they meet the, the journalists have turned their back on the people. Simon, you said something earlier in this interview. You said that they give questions to Jen, uh, to Jen Psaki or Karine Jean-Pierre. They, they pre-approve their questions. Does that happen? Yes. So the, the White House actually reaches out to journalists and they ask them to send topics. And they justify it by saying that if you send topics, we have a more comprehensive answer for you. People end up sending topics and questions. But if you want to ask about the laptop, Hunter Biden, China, Biden, the connection, the financial connection, you can send it in advance. And so she won't call on you. What they do is they don't send softball questions. I've spoken with one, at least one journalist in the room who told me that they can't send the real questions because they won't call on them. And, and it, it's... So the whole press briefing is rigged, right? You have 49 seats in the briefing room. You have people in the first and second rows who get all the questions. And you, you know, a lot of them send topics or questions in advance. And she comes and she reads from the binder. If you're in the briefing room and she doesn't have your questions, she sees you as a danger. Or if you ask questions that the people, the American people really care about, she won't call on you. She will silence you. She will sideline you. She may even discriminate against you, which is what is happening to me. 
I'm just trying to do my job. I'm saying, let's do our job. Let's ask the questions that people care about. Let's build trust. Let's build connection. Let's build relationships with people. Let's not become friends of the government going to the White House correspondent dinner, not to connect with other journalists, but to just, you know, the band me, I won't be able to attend the White House Correspondents Association dinner uh, next month. But I don't really care. I'm just doing my job and they're trying to silence me because I speak for the people, I do my job, I don't send my questions or topics in advance and, and the American people stand with me. It does seem particularly discriminatory because you have an administration that mules on and on and on about skin color and race and about equity and about immigrants. And uh, you are in the privileged camp of all of those things as it pertains to what the administration says they care about. They, 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 they care. They, they go on and on and on about these things. So you should be the first person to be called based on what they claim is their priorities. But you never get called on. Yeah, that, that does seem what... discriminatory. Yeah, exactly. That's what Whoopi Goldberg and Joy Behar and Sarah Hain and, and Alisa Ferrer Griffin, that's what they don't understand. How do you explain that President Biden is hosting 50 African presidents in Washington, D.C., the biggest gathering of presidents he has hosted at the same time? But the African journalist who covers the White House is not even given the opportunity to ask one question. Next week, the vice president is going to Africa. The first lady just returned from Africa. Yesterday, the White House announced that an American missionary who had been detained in Niger for six years, more than six years since 2016, has been released. But the African who covers the White House, you discriminate against him. You look down on him. You don't respect him. You believe that you are better than him. And listen, I'm educate, an educated guy. I have two degrees. I did my first degree in journalism, second degree in journalism, mass communication. I've done only one job. I've written countless stories, attended countless press conferences, gone from West Africa to the U.S. everywhere. I'm, I'm not just, I'm not a so-called journalist. I'm a true journalist. I don't do anything else. I do it full time. I've attended more White House press briefings under Biden than any single person in the briefing room. I've been there every single day, more than CNN, more than Fox News, more than CBS, more than NBC, all of them combined. I've always there. Some of them come once or twice a week because they have bigger teams. They have one person who will come twice and another person will come twice or someone will come to them, we will come five weeks after. I'm always there. I've seen everything. I've seen the Afghanistan meltdown. I've seen Ukraine. I've seen, I've been there at every big, you know, turn, every big moment that took place in the Biden White House. So, uh, you know, and you know, maybe the last piece I will say is this. All we are trying to do at Today News Africa is to strengthen ties between the U.S. and Africa at a time where China is rising and spreading disinformation against the U.S. I'm here telling them you need to empower us by giving us the opportunity to ask relevant questions on U.S.-Africa relations. You don't need to do the work of China when they are spreading disinformation and misinformation against the U.S. Russia is expanding in Africa and the U.S. is retreating and you are seeing it even in Europe where China is now the big guy. They're now the one trying to broker peace between Russia and Ukraine. They just did one with Saudi Arabia. And the U.S., the most powerful country in the world, the most advanced nation in the world, has taken a back seat. And people are watching and asking, asking, where is the U.S.? Where is the U.S.? Where is the most powerful country in the world? They can't see it. They can't see it. And that wasn't the case just a few years ago. If you had, I know this isn't how it works in the White House, but if Joe Biden got into an elevator with you uh, by accident and you had an opportunity to ask him a question, what would you ask? Okay, so I will ask him two questions. 
You know, but let me preface it. The biggest humanitarian crisis between 2021 and, two and now has not been in Ukraine. It has been in Ethiopia, Tigray, where 600,000 people have died. We didn't see the outrage. We didn't see the billions of dollars flowing to Ethiopia. We saw 600,000 people killed, according to U.S. estimate. Why? Why is the support not there? And also in Ukraine, last week, the White House said that President Biden doesn't support a ceasefire between Russia and Ukraine. And one of my questions is, when is the best time for ceasefire? Because Russia will not totally win this war. Ukraine cannot win this war. How many people have to die before you decide that we need to talk? Because eventually you will get back to that same place. So why don't you do it now and spare billions of dollars and redirect some of that money to East Palestine, to the border, and to other places? So some of those, some, some, those are some of the questions that we we'll have asked yesterday. And then, of course, the vice president trip to Africa, you know, the first lady and, you know, U.S.-Africa relations. So, Simon, yesterday you were maligned from the press dais. This is my final question for you because it, we did watch your hit on Tucker last night. We do think that you are the bravest, perhaps last journalist left in that room, last real journalist, although we do have a lot of love for Peter Ducey. Uh, you were maligned from the press dais by Corinne Jean-Pierre. Uh, she talked specifically about you, and we wanted to give you, as a final question here, a, a chance to respond because she certainly won't give you a chance to speak. Uh, we'll play the clip for you and then perhaps get your response. What you are doing, you are making it monthly of the first American. It's been seven months. You've not called on me. You've not uh, my message. I'm saying that does not right. Fun right. times. Welcome, guys. <laughs> Welcome. Welcome to the press briefing room. This is not right. This is not China. This is not Russia. This is the United ah! States. This is the White House. No, it's been seven months. I sent you seven months. You've been arrested, Mr. Pierre, too, pal. It is been seven months. You guys have not done any more for me. If you have grievances, you should bring them to her later. I have right done now, that. I have done that. All my emails have been ignored. And the press corps is tired of dealing with this. It is not about that. you, Simon. I understand that you get questioned all the time and you don't the understand what it is to sit here for eight months and being discriminated hey, against. I understand that you're in the front row and you feel comfortable and you get questioned all the time. But there are time. people in the back who don't get any questions. Don't make assumptions about what the rest of us do. Mind your manners when you're in here. If you have a problem, you bring it up afterwards. What has just occurred this last 10, 15 minutes is unacceptable. So is it unacceptable for you to actually ask no, questions? It's, and it's, more importantly, what was that scream? There was someone who, someone screamed. Yeah. <laughs> People yeah. scream at you? Yeah. You know, so, so first of all, the second guy, the Brian guy, you know, he's a former Playboy, you know, journalist who now works yeah. for CNN. And he's a disgrace. He, he got into a fight in the Rose Garden and he was removed from the White House Correspondents Association last year. He, I can send you the video of how he attacked Sarah Huckabee Sanders when she was press secretary, and then went on CNN to brag about it. When they asked him if he wanted to apologize, he said, I will rather apologize to the women and the people that former President Trump had offended. He said, disgrace, and that's the guy who has the God to come and criticize me for trying to ask serious questions. And, and so it, it's a show, a clown show, you know, the White House press briefing, press briefing. Most of them are rigged. The questions are known in advance. And she calls on people who send her, who will ask softball questions. If you're like me, Simon at table and decide to ask real questions about real issues and international issues, they will ignore you. It's, unacceptable to have someone in the briefing room who has been discriminated against for seven months and you don't call on him. It's not just disrespecting me, it's disrespecting the entire continent of Africa. When you are claiming that you are trying to strengthen ties between US and Africa, it's a shame. So it's not about, it's not, it, it's unacceptable what they are doing to me. And those people who came to, like, it's almost insane to have someone in 
the first row who gets multiple questions all the time. He asks questions that we can't even hear. People who sit in the back of the room can't even hear what he's talking about. And he asks questions that most Americans will not remember the next day. And to have that guy pretend or try to lecture me, it's a disgrace. He's a disgrace to the First Amendment that protects freedom of the press, free speech, and the right to petition government. And, you know, at that same press briefing, that first guy from Reuters got multiple questions, while most people in the briefing room didn't get any single question. So that's what is unacceptable, to discriminate against people you disagree with. Those are things that happen in China, in Russia, in a lot of dictatorships in Africa, where you are afraid to ask a question because you may be arrested, jailed, and punished because you ask a a question to you know to a government official this is the us in the united states is the most advanced country in the world because we have basic freedoms we respect people we respect people's rights at least in theory that's how it should be and that's why the us is different from all those dictatorships and for me to face discrimination in the biden white house it's shocking to me it is shocking and it's wrong. And we're thankful for you and we're cheering you on. You know, you have millions of backers, millions of people who support you. We watch you on Tucker and we also follow you on Twitter. Uh, I believe we have your Twitter account here. Toss it up. 159,000 followers. Simon, you are blowing up, man. Where else can people find your work? What's the best way for people to support you? Yeah, you can go to todaynewsafrica.com or go to my substack, simonateba.substack.com. And, and contribute to our publication. We don't receive big money from anyone. We don't request. Uh, we thrive on advertisement if we get one and subscription. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, a real journalist and a really brave person, Simon Atiba. It's an honor to have you on the program. Thank you for having me. All right, ladies and gentlemen, Simon was asking about COVID and the origins of COVID. We may actually find out about the origins of COVID. Biden orders all U.S. intelligence to release all documents on COVID origins and any links to the Wuhan lab within 90 days. OK, uh, interesting. America comes one step closer to learning the truth about China's role in the lab leaks. OK, well, they've destroyed all of the evidence. This is probably four years too late right now. And, of course, what this is going to show is that Dr. Fauci funded it all, that he did it. He funded it all through DOD contracts, through his pay raises that he got through the Patriot Act. And that's where this all comes from. Shockingly enough, it was Barack Obama who put a stop to the gain-of-function research that Fauci was doing because he had too many lab leaks. And then Fauci moved the whole operation overseas illegally. You're looking for someone to be in prison here in this country. I think you'd get a huge portion of people to come together on the left and the right to say that it's, um, well, Dr. Fauci, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, so we'll see what happens with that report. We won't necessarily hold our breath. We do find it uh, quite interesting, however, that there are multiple uh, cracks inside of the uh, leftist left flank, not just with the Donald Trump and uh, Joe Biden potential arrest here, but also with Joe Biden's major policies inside of the city of New York, they are looking at a $10 billion cost for Joe Biden's illegal immigration, illegal immigration to cost New Yorkers $10 billion in 2023, according to reports. So they're going after Trump and it's Joe Biden who is essentially bankrupting their entire city. And have you been in New York recently? The place is an absolute hellhole. My wife and I went there over Christmas for a professional function for a Christmas party, and it was bad. It was bad. It was filthy. There were trash piled up on the streets. Don't go to New York. It ain't the city it used to be. Ben and Jerry's founder, Ben Cohen, calls for the U.S. to stop supplying weapons to Ukraine as he pours a million dollars into campaign to negotiate an end of the war with Russia. Huh? <laughs> You're losing everyone here. You're losing Chris Rock, Mike Tyson, Elon Musk, Ben and Jerry's. Oh my God. These and these people are communists. These people are complete Marxists. 
So the uh, Ben & Jerry's co-founder, Ben Cohen, running a campaign to call on the U.S. to stop providing military support for Ukraine. The Eisenhower Media Network has been pitching outlets on claims that the United States is spending too much money in helping Ukraine and Vladimir Putin. So this is the initiative founded by Ben & Jerry's co-owner. Of course, this guy is a dirty old communist. He's a big backer of Bernie Sanders. But yo, broke clocks are right twice a day. We support this, certainly. Uh, Joe Biden is trying to start World War III, starting, trying to agitate World War III because he has no domestic policy victories at home. Everyone hates him. And so he, Joe Biden needs World War III in order to continue uh, his presidency. Also, people of this generation, they're all in their 80s. They're all octogenarians. They're obsessed with World War II iconography. They can't help but jump into a war in Europe. No more wars in Europe. Enough. Enough of the bloodletting on the red-soaked plains of these meaningless European nations. Enough! Enough American troops and treasure lost in pointless foreign wars. And there is enough American lives lost right here at home. That's why we're proud that our friend Sarah Huckabee Sanders has signed a bill to build a monument to babies aborted under Roe v. Wade. Way to go, Sarah. Arkansas Governor Sarah Huckabee Sanders signed a bill late last week authorizing the building of a monument at the state capitol grounds to babies aborted during the era of Roe v. Wade. Way to go. The Monument to Unborn Children Display Act creates a private fund to cover the cost of the monument. And the Capital Artists and Ground Commission will oversee the design of the monument. The bill, Senate Bill 307, details how Arkansas, which now fully bans abortion except to save the life of the mother, was prevented from protecting the life of unborn children under Roe v. Wade. Way to go. During the period from 1973 to uh, 2022, at least 236,000 elective abortions were performed in the state. Wow, 236,000. That's much larger than the hometown I grew up in, uh, in the state of Iowa. I mean, this is a huge number of people. This is what, oh man. Are, are you feeling it right now? Are you feeling as though the, uh, the evil is getting more desperate in our country? Are you feeling as though like we may be on a righteous upswing that they are losing? Are you hearing the demon screams? Are you seeing the behavior of desperate people? Putting Donald Trump in prison is not an act of powerful people. It's an act of craven, desperate lunacy. They're losing. They're desperate. This is not what desperate people do. Animals don't just go around attacking everyone. It's the desperate, rabies-filled, ravenous ones that have been backed into corners that go out and lash out. They're behaving like animals, these people. They're goblins, and it is so sweet, their defeat. They're tears. They taste like Rocky Road ice cream. I love to eat them up as I focus on the true truth. Every single program, ladies and gentlemen, we bring you the word of actual truth from the scriptures. This verse of the day comes from 2 Timothy. For God gave us a spirit, not of fear, but of power and love and self-control. We're going to be controlled here. Whew deep breath. We're going to feel the spirituality around us. We're going to have good energy on the show. We're going to bring you truth, justice, the American way. We're going to bring you, ladies and gentlemen, some hope. And we're going to win. The victory is ours in this life or the next, ladies and gentlemen. God promises that to us. So that will be our hope as we tread forward. We'll structure our lives correctly. God, family, country. That's what we care about on this program. That's what we fight for. And we'll keep fighting right alongside you. My name is Benny Johnson, and this is The Benny Show. See ya. Thank <laughs> you.